G'day, George Lisa here from the Nine Skills Factory. First of all, I want to welcome you along to uh, the series of three videos. Uh, what we're going to be talking about is pitching, pitching ideas, pitching solutions, pitching products or services, um, pretty much from a context of you've got an audience that aren't fully aware of what it is you're about to deliver. They haven't come to your shop uh, or website to buy from you and uh, you're standing on a stage or you're standing in front of them and you're going to pitch this thing. So that context there requires pretty sound psychology in order to be successful in getting people to buy in. And um, you know, there's so many different ways of, of making it fail that what we've got to be aware of is certain principles. Now, in the series of videos, you know, I'm obviously going to talk about three different things that all feed into that overarching one. In this particular video, what I'm going to look at is uh, where the pitching concept actually fits within the overarching um, you know, idea of change. And the second thing is where pitches can go wrong. Um, and that will give you some clues to the different types of things that you may have done in the past, which, have made, which has made it hard for you to present something to people and get, get buy into it. Uh, and it may also give you a clue to the different types of things you might need to adjust or change in order to get people to more consistently buy into your ideas or your products or your services. So uh, let's hook in. Now, I want to begin by, first of all, talking about where pitching fits in the overarching uh, concept of change. If you think about um, where, you know, the, the change concept, all change begins with an idea. Right. And the development of that idea requires a specific skill set. So it could be developing a strategy that you're going to go and pitch. It could be developing a solution to a problem in business, which would require some sort of improvement methodology skill set. Um, it could be the development of a product or a service that requires your ability to go and look at a market, study where the gap is, and come up with a solution that would be a product or service for closing that gap and meeting some customer need or market need. But Regardless of the situation, it all begins with the development of an idea. Now, the second part is where we take that idea and we pitch it. Right, that meant, that's meant to be a baseball. Right, so we go and pitch that idea. Now, the pitching of that idea, again, requires a very specific skill set, but the pitching part also requires a lot of knowledge of certain principles around uh, the underpinning psychology of how you take people from... Uh, the beginning through a journey to the end and what we're trying to replicate is the journey that the people go through when they come up with the idea itself so the, there is some relationship in the process overall now after the pitch that's where we take them from you know or we execute the idea and we take them from one situation to another there's kind of a lateral move as we execute whatever it is that we're pitching or proposing now, that could be some sort of organisational change, you know, inside a company where you're solving a problem. It could also be where there's a transaction. You transfer your product or service to the customer, reinforce the buy decision, and uh, make sure that you get ongoing, you know, custom from these people. So that, again, particularly when it comes to organisational change, requires a very specific skill set. Now, all of this is underpinned by another skill set that relates to the interaction of humans. Right, so if you think about it this way, we have the ability or we need the ability to be able to transfer information from our head into the head of the audience. And we need to be able to do that in such a way that the meaning that we have in our head or the understanding we have of this idea or this information is the same meaning that they get once you transfer it. Now, Anyone in a relationship, anyone who's ever presented to large groups, anyone who's ever been a trainer knows that that's actually quite a difficult process. What it requires is a complementary skill, and that is the ability to be able to elicit information about what is happening in the head of the audience in terms of how they process information so that we can adjust the transfer or the way that we're transferring information to them and meet their specific processing or thinking needs. And if we can do that, elicit information at the same time as we adjust our transfer of information, then we come, become more effective at communicating information to people in such a way they get the meaning that we intended. Now, that particular set of skills pretty much underpins 
everything else in this model because all of this requires the ability to communicate to people on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So what we want to talk about in this particular you know, series of videos is not those things specifically, but this particular skill set, the ability to pitch the information. So there's some assumptions about all these other pieces here, but we're obviously not going to be able to cover everything you know, in the time that we've got available. Now, the, only, the thing that I want to point out or close this out with is what is it that causes this pitch right, to be a problem? Right? What we want to do is have a successful pitch, not an unhappy pitch. Now, what I have found over the years is that there are pretty much four things or four situations that would cause or put blocks in terms of your success in creating that pitch. Right? And this, this is where the pitches go wrong. So, let's describe them this way. The very first thing, right, and that is where you kind of fall back to the logic of your idea. Your pitch is all built around the logic of it. It makes sense to do this. And the problem with that is when you start to present at the logic level, where it comes from is we're emotionally connected to the solution, right? And that strong emotional connect connection to the solution means it's all about the solution itself. And anyone who knows in you know, the world of influence and persuasion, over-reliance over on logic isn't going to get you successful sales. Over-connection from an emotional perspective to the solution itself pushes us down the logic path and it becomes a barrier to the pitch. Okay? Not, whoop, it's not a smiley face in those situations. End up being a, <laughs> like a moustache. Okay, the second thing, and that's when you get a no before you've finished your pitch. Okay, if you get a no before you've finished your pitch, in fact, let me backtrack. The intent of you doing a pitch is to get people to go through a full journey with you and fully consider the idea. If you get a no before you've actually finished your pitch, you've got a problem because in our culture, we have a deeply ingrained, deeply embedded desire to remain consistent with any stand or statement that we, we make. And if a customer or an audience member or a, you know, a leader that you're presenting to to get buy-in um, or permission to do something says no early before you've finished, you've got a problem because it's very hard to knock that, down, uh, that no down and turn into a yes, nigh on impossible. So we don't want the no at the beginning. If we're going to get a no, then at least let's get it at the end. Okay. The third thing is where... Objections are raised before we've addressed them. Objections are raised before we've addressed them. Now, when objections are raised, so basically an effective pitch uh, from a you know, very influential type person would include conversation around typical uh, objections that might be raised um, to the idea or the pr product or the solution that we're actually presenting to people. And if we address those before they're raised, we're less likely to get the objection. But if you get the objection early before you've actually addressed it, well, that is pretty much like getting a no. Once the objection's raised, you've got people thinking about reasons why they don't want to do this. So what we would need to do is address those objections first before they actually come up. The last thing and probably one of the most important, important things, that is where we have an absence of rapport. An absence of rapport makes it nigh impossible to sell something to people. Rapport is built around the idea that birds of a feather flock together. People like people like themselves. When we have something in common, right, we're in rapport. And rapport, when it exists, is pretty much invisible. It just feels comfortable. But if we have an absence of rapport, then you might be presenting, you know, your pitch. It could be a beautiful presentation, could be a beautiful pitch. But if there's no rapport or an absence of rapport, it's right there in their face. Because what's going through the head now is conversation associated with the lack of rapport. Right? I don't like this person. There's something about them I don't understand. There's something about them I don't trust. And people in sales know that it's not impossible to sell anything to someone if they don't like you up front. So all of these four things, absence of rapport, having objections raised before you've actually addressed them, getting a no before you've finished, 
or being overly connected emotionally to the product or solution or service that you're presenting are all going to make it very difficult to do a successful pitch. So there you have it. Um, the intent of that was to, particularly this last part, is to give you some ideas around the things that you know you need to think about where you may have gone wrong in the past or things that you may need to adjust in future pitches to make sure that you don't get these blocks uh, being you know raised during the process of pitching something. So in the next video, what we're going to look at is uh, the blueprint design. There's actually a blueprint that you may or may not have downloaded to get to this point. And what I'm going to do is run through how you use that blueprint. And it's all about how you uh, get the information associated with designing a pitch and then how you deliver that pitch. And uh, it will relate to uh, some of the strategies that we're going to talk about in that, in that particular video. So the download will be in that video, so you don't need to worry about getting it until you get there. And uh, I will see you in the next video.